Have you ever wondered if average body weight of adults in the US is heavier or lighter than the adults from the rest of the world? Hi, I'm Dr. J from Modern Statistics. In this short video, I answer this question using a statistical technique called one sample t-test in SPSS. I'll explain why we use it, what we need to test it, and interpret the results in ways that are easy to understand. Let's jump right in. Here I am with a data set that contains two variables. We'll use one of them for an example in this video. This data set is extracted from the 2018 General Social Survey data, which is a nationally representative survey of adults in the US produced by NORC, the nonpartisan research institution at the University of Chicago. The full data set is available for free to researchers like you. If you'd like to download the full version, the link to access the data is provided in the description below. Let's say you want to know whether the average body weight of adults in the US differs from 136.7 pound, which is the average for the population of all adults in the world. So you examine the body weight of a random sample of 2,347 adults in the US. So the question is, are US adults on average heavier or lighter than those from the rest of the world? With the one simple t-test, what we need is one continuous variable. And in our case, that would be the weight variable, which contains the measurement of body weight for each individual who participated in the survey. One key assumption we should have when testing one simple t-test is that the distribution of the data should be approximately normal and that the subjects are independent. Now, let's run the program. Go to Analyze, go to Compare Means, and select one sample t-test. Now, to test the null hypothesis that a random sample of adults comes from a population with an average body weight of 136.7 pounds, we move our variable weight to the box under test variable, like so. And of course, the alternative hypothesis is that our sample here does not come from a population with average body weight of 136.7 pounds. What would be the test value here? The test value would be the average body weight of adults in the world, which is 136.7 pounds. And we type that in there like so. Click on the options button. The latest SPSS version has this nice option to choose the percentage for your confidence interval. We'll just leave it as it is. Click continue and click OK to run the procedure. SPSS will produce three tables in the output. Let's look at the first table. Nothing exciting really about this first table. We're just checking to make sure that there is nothing funny here. So for the 1,380 adults in this sample, the average body weight is 182.4 pounds. With a sample standard deviation of 45.487, so the 1,380 respondents were on average heavier than the average adult body weight for the world. But we know that the sample mean right here is subject to random sampling variability. In other words, even if the sample is selected from a population in which the normal body weight for adult is 136.7 pounds, we would not expect our sample to have an observed body weight of exactly 136.7 pounds because samples from the same population, they do vary. So we have the mean and the standard deviation and standard error of the mean. The standard error of the mean right here is calculated by dividing the sample standard deviation 45.487 by the square root of the sample size, which gives us 1.224, the standard error of the mean, which quantifies how much on average sample means in a random sample of this size deviate from the population mean. So with this standard error of the mean, we can now estimate 
the number of standard errors, our mean 182.42 is from the assumed value of the population mean. If the null hypothesis is true with the t-statistic, which SPSS calculates for us here at 37.336. Just to make sure you know where this t-statistic comes from, this t-statistic is derived by subtracting the population mean, which is 136.7 pounds from 182 pounds and divide the total by the standard error of the mean 1.224. Now, let me remind you that we're conducting a two-tailed, in other words, non-directional hypothesis test here. So the null hypothesis is that the average, uh, the world average adult body weight is 136.7. And the alternative hypothesis would be that the world average uh, adult body weight is not 136.7. Now, the p-value displayed under two-sided p is less than the minimum alpha threshold of 0 0.05. Now, remember that the alpha is the probability of obtaining a false positive with the statistical test, which means the probability of rejecting a null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually true. In our findings here, SPSS is telling us that the p-value for a two-tailed test of the null hypothesis that the population mean being 136.7 is less than 0 0.001. In plain English, it means that there is less than 0.1% possibility that we could observe a t-statistic this large as a result of some random luck if null hypothesis is true. So to, to tell it like it is, there's no way in hell this happened by an accident. The mean difference based on the sample is approximately 45 pounds. But how precise is this point estimate really? I'm an advocate of reporting confidence interval whenever and wherever possible. It simply provides more information about the possible range of values of the population mean than does a hypothesis test. So we look at the 95% confidence interval of the difference. It simply means that if we were to draw 100 samples from the population, then in 95% of the time, or say 95% of the samples, we're likely to see a true population value lie between these two numbers, 43 and 48 pounds of mean difference in body weight between the sample mean and the population mean. Now, if you're like me, you might not be satisfied just yet. Why? Well. Hypothesis testing such as this only identifies whether an effect exists in a population. When we decide to reject a null hypothesis, as we do in this example, we conclude that an effect does exist in the population. However, hypothesis testing does not tell us how large or medium or how small the effect really is. So what do we do? We compute effect size, which gives an estimate of the size of an effect in the population. So let's look at the last table in the output. Effect size calculation was previously not available in SPSS, so we had to compute various effect sizes by hand. The latest version of SPSS now offers these options. Now, one of the most commonly used effect size estimate is the estimated coins D. It's relatively easy to calculate the point estimate for coins D. The formula is, Sample mean minus population mean divided by sample standard deviation. Wait a minute, why use sample standard deviation and not population standard deviation? We use the sample standard deviation when the population standard deviation is unknown. And we use it because it gives us an unbiased estimate of the population standard deviation. So if you do the math, it will give us a coincidence D equals 1.008. I mean, I mean 1.005. And if you decide to use coins D for effect size, the criteria for interpreting the strength are that somewhere around 0.2 means small effect, somewhere around 0.5 means medium effect, and somewhere around 0.8 means large effect, according to Quinn himself, which um, he explained in his 1988 article.
So what we have here is 1.005, which means the effect was relatively large. Now, this concludes our video. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.